My name is Stanislaw Robert Liberta, and in this lesson, we're going to learn the basics of using image mask to create a transition. If you open up our 17B, we're going to take a look at how to create something like this. So you can see right around here, I have two images, and I'm using a single shape to create a reveal of another video layer. If we break down our project, we have three main different groups. We have our image one, our image two, and then our mask group, which just has a rectangle in it. So let's go ahead and open up 17B start, and we can talk about how this was put together. What I have here is just a couple different images that I shot while I was in the desert of Las Vegas. So you can see here I have image one. If I turn that off, we can see image two. And what I wanna do is use a single shape to reveal one to the other. So we're gonna, let's start with zooming out a little bit. I'm gonna zoom out to about 25%. These are very long images that I've just attached a move behavior to. So they're just moving left to right. And what I wanna do is I wanna reveal this image one. Let's create a new group. I'm gonna call this group masks. And in that group, we're just going to draw a rectangle. And all I wanna do is I wanna make sure that it fills the left and right of the screen. It doesn't necessarily have to fill the top to bottom. We just want it to fill there. And for our purposes, let's make this bright red just so we can see it very clearly. And I wanna make sure it's at the beginning of my timeline. So I'm gonna make sure I go to my image and my masks and hit I on my keyboard at the beginning of my timeline and that'll extend it all the way out. What I wanna do right now is I really want this to kind of scale from here all the way up. And the reason being is if I can use that animation as a mask, then I can reveal one to the other. So we've got our rectangle here. And what I wanna do is I'm just gonna change its anchor point to the bottom. And the reason for that is when I scale it, I don't want it to scale proportionately. I want it to scale from here. So if I go to my Y, you can see it's just scaling across there. And we're gonna take this below our screen and I'm gonna create a keyframe right here at about 128. In fact, let's move that to two seconds. And we'll go to three seconds and we're gonna take our Y scale and we're just gonna drag that all the way up. The reason being is we just wanna fill our screen. So if I play this back, that's what we've got. So now I can go to my image one and create an image mask. And we're just gonna drag this whole group into this image mask. So now it's revealing one to the other, but we've got this really hard edge on here. If I zoom this in, you can see what it's doing is it's using this exact shape to do that. And that's not necessarily what I want. If what I can do is go to my rectangle and under the style of it, I can feather this off. And the more that I feather this, the more gradual we're gonna get that transition. So if I zoom this back out, now we can kind of take a look at that. So where would this be useful? Well, if you remember my other lesson, building transitions, this is key to everything. If we had a replicator sequence that was revealing one to the other, as long as it fills that screen, we can use it as a transitional piece. From If you're not familiar with my transition lesson, be sure to check that out because we talk about masks just a little bit more and we use a sequence replicator to reveal one piece of video to another.